Mia, you claim that after a lifetime of believing another man was your dad, you were surprised to learn the defendant, Mr. Johnston, could be your biological father. You've been close friends with him for more than 20 years and say you were shocked when he sat you down and gave you the news. Mr. Johnston, you say you felt compelled to confess the secret that Mrs. Garcia's mother made you keep for three decades until the day she died. Furthermore, you say you're hoping she's your daughter and you've even changed your will to include her as yours. Now, Mrs. Garcia, why is it important for you to find out if Mr. Johnston is your biological father at this point in your life? Well, Your Honor, I've always wanted to have a father. My father that I thought was my father was very abusive, and I watched my mother go through a second marriage with the same type of abuse. And so I came from a broken home, mm -hmm. which in turn, my children also, my family, my personal family fell apart. And um, I ended up raising my grandsons with my husband that I have now. And having a father is important. It's important to me. So I've always felt close to Rusty, and I never knew why. I never could understand this bond, this, this feeling, you know, that was always there with him. So today, if it's true, I want to know it. You know, I want to know that. I want to have that. Now, Mr. Johnston, how did you come to meet her mother? Well, started out that I was a truck driver, and uh, I got tired, and I pulled up by the Lake Isabel, mm -hmm. and I was going to stay there overnight and sleep. And um, I pulled up there, and before I turned the lights out, there was a man walking right along the side of the lake. He was cussing, and he was drunk, and uh, his car started up, and he left, and I heard a whimper. And I seen this girl all in a bundle, all beat up, blood uh -huh. all over her face and on the clothes. And so what did you do? I picked her up and put her in the truck uh -huh. and cleaned her up mm -hmm. and um, asked her, I said, uh, you want me to take you home? And she said, I can't go home until I know that he's uh, in bed, passed out. And what happens? Well, got to talking. One thing led to another. And, um, and then uh, sex was involved. And sex was involved. Then, <laughs> then I took her home and um, I left. And, and that was uh, the last time you heard from her for 28 years? Right. OK. Now, Mrs. Garcia, tell me how you came face to face with Mr. Johnston. I had become a Christian, and I had started attending church. And I went to Lake Isabella to visit a small church. And I would go visit my mother in Lake Isabella. And I convinced her to start going to this church up there, and I took her. Rusty was there attending that church, and my mother continued to go to that church. And at that time, I was pastoring another church in Bakersfield. And then there came a time when Rusty's first wife passed away, and he came to my church and became a member. And I remember seeing him walk through the door while church was going on. And for some reason, I just jumped off the platform, and I ran down there and held on to him, and I hugged him, and I welcomed him. I welcomed him. Now, Mr. Johnston, at that time, Ms. Garcia is 28 years old. Yes. And her mother says what to you? She asked me, says, uh, first she said, do you recognize who I am? And I said, yeah. And uh, she said, uh, that is your daughter that fo followed me in. And I don't want you telling her anything until I pass away. And I probably would be better if you didn't tell her at all. At some point, unfortunately, her mother passes away. How do you get to the point where you decide, I'm no longer going to keep this secret? I asked her to sit down, and I want to talk to her. And I explained everything in detail. And I since think... that time, you've developed a relationship with her, and you've even written her into your will? Yes. Your family is not 
completely pleased that you've included Ms. Garcia in your will. Is that correct? Right. And Ms. Garcia, your sister, doubts that Mr. Johnston is, in fact, your father. Yes, she does. It's almost unimaginable. 28 years holding a secret. Have you stopped to consider? For 28 years, he's around you, he loves you, he's there for you, and he can't tell you. I didn't know it was 28 years that he held the secret. The day he came to tell me, I was under the assumption that my mother told him right before she died, which was in 2009. I just found out today that he actually knew it way back when I was 20. So these results are important to you because Absolutely. you feel as if they will complete my, my family, my your life. Your family. My life. And not just for me, but for my child, for my grandsons. Well, that is why we're here today and we have the results. Jerome, do you have the envelope? Yes, I do. There you go, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. If you'd like to sit down, Mr. Johnston, feel free to take a seat. Ms. Garcia, please feel free. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they are as follows. In the case of Garcia versus Johnston, when it comes to Cindy Lee Garcia, Mr. Johnston, you... If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. In the case of Garcia versus Johnston, when it comes to Cindy Lee Garcia, Mr. Johnston, You are not her father. Your Honor, could I say something? Yes, you may, sir. You know, uh, this young lady is very important to me, whether it turned out that I'm not or I am. I love her, she is my child, and I love her, and she's gonna be my child till I'm gone or till she's gone. And as far as anything goes on my part, uh, if she needs me, I'm there. If there's any... Ms. Garcia, how do you feel? I'll love him till the day I die, and he will always be my spiritual father. And I knew that coming in here. I have every confidence that you will go forward and continue to love one another and be the family that truly you are, because family is about more than biology. Right. There's a biological connection and there is a love connection. That's right. And you most certainly have the latter. I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Court is adjourned. I love you. Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. This is a case of Caldwell versus Fortson. Thank you, Jerome. You're Good welcome. day, everyone. Mr. Caldwell. Yes, ma'am. You claim your girlfriend, Ms. Fortson, cheated on you with another man that she says is just a friend. Yes, ma'am. Now, as a result, you say there's a strong possibility that you may not be the biological father of her five-month-old daughter, Cariana. Yes, ma'am. Now, Ms. Fortson, you confess you did have sex with another man and admit you also questioned the paternity of your daughter. Yes, ma'am. But you're here today because you claim Mr. Caldwell is most likely the biological father of your baby. Yes, ma'am. Now, Mr. Caldwell, why do you believe you are not the father of five-month-old Kariana? First off, Jan, it's like this dude, her, her ex, a friend or whatever you want to call it, you know, has been causing problems the whole time, you know what I'm saying, and during the time 
around, I've actually brought evidence. I'm gonna bring this out first thing, you know, so we can go and nip this in the bud. It took her too long to admit to it. She admitted earlier this year that she slept with somebody last year, and that's around the same time that you know the baby was conceived. Jerome, can you grab his evidence, sure. please? Here you go, Judge. Thank you. You're welcome. So you that, submitted a calendar to the court. Yes, ma'am. That outlines the estimated time of conception and who Ms. Fortson had sexual relations with. Yes, ma'am. In yellow is the other possible father. And the green is when she was intimate with you. Yes. The 29th and 30th of July, that'd be back to back days. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Right? Yes, ma'am. Is that correct, Ms. Fortson? Yes, ma'am. Now, were you honest with Mr. Caldwell right away? No, ma'am. No, ma During that time, we was in together. We had a break. We broke up. And like a week, maybe a few weeks later, we end up getting back together. And when did you admit to Mr. Caldwell that you had sex with this other gentleman? This year. Okay. So, obviously, Mr. Caldwell, this is the subject of your doubt. Yes, man. Not only that, you know, I'm questioning their friendship, too. They are really too close. It's like every time me and her do have an argument or whatever, he the first person she call, you know what I'm saying? We, we moved into a spot together. We, we moved in the spot. Oh, she's so precious. And before, you know, we getting a little verbal altercation, but he was the first person to spend the night in our spot. This supposed to be a spot me and her got together, and he slept there before me. So that's another thing that got me questioning their friendship. Well, I so would question it, too. You uh, go and get a new place, and this other man sleeps at the place before he even gets to move in? Miss Fortson, what's going on? We had ended up breaking up then, too, Your Honor. We wasn't... We okay, hold separated. on. Now, y'all breaking up, but y'all always in the bed. Yeah. When Carrie... I done he heard him admit he was in love with her. The first year we I done heard together. the man say he was in love with her on her phone. They on the phone talking. They on speakerphone. You no. know what I'm saying? And I heard this man come no. out his mouth and tell her, why would I come do that for him when I'm still in love with you? I'm like, hold on, see that the whole thing, but it want me out of the way. So he, 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 what's he, interesting to me is this other gentleman was on today's court docket as well, was supposed to appear and he didn't come for did some reason. Come. It's something up in here. Why he didn't show up, young? What, what, what do he got to hide? So, Ms. Fortson, you think this gentleman has something to hide or something he's fearing? Yes. So as you stand here today, you truly don't know who your child's father is. No, I don't. It's a possibility. It's so the, since Carrie has been born, has Mr. Caldwell stepped up to the plate? I do everything. I've been there since no, day one. Don't. I was at the hospital when she was born. I'm there every day with her physically, emotionally, he everything. Don't when buy she wake her up. Anything. That's he beside the point. Financially, I might not be able to for a job, but my family made a way that I could. My folks the one through the baby anything. shower. Her family didn't do it. My family threw I the baby shower for honor. the baby. We got a lot of problems, and all the problems are based around her friend. You know what I'm saying? That by no, how close they are. What's up with true. this friendship, Ms. Fortson? When you're in a relationship with somebody and you're trying to make it work and you have a child and his family's he throwing baby stuff. He have friends. He have friends. I have evidence that he um, was messaging a girl on Facebook. Jerome, can you pass me sure. that evidence? So this is a message from him to another That's woman. That's the time I was pregnant with Carrie on And Man, I thought I, I had her. I changed everything. Passcode, email, and everything. Don't nobody have access to my Yana, account but me. I'm me sorry for putting you in but the you midst of all my... my... Excuse, Excuse me. Excuse me. But I never lied to you about nothing. I lied to her so she wouldn't blow the move before I made my move. I love you, baby. You know. You all mine forever. Everything that happens that you reading about, that is a that is a female that yeah. I was dealing with after she had done put me out, and I can probably yeah, say. Yeah, was it together? What you mean? So I'm hold on. Together. Basically, this relationship is a mess. Yeah, I feel that. It takes more than love to sustain a relationship. You need commitment and trust. You two don't trust each other as far as you can throw one another. No, yeah, we don't. It's the reason behind all He's of that. Insecure. I, I want to go to the results because ultimately, this is about Kariana, and she deserves to know who her father is.
You up. Jerome, do you have the results, please? I do. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. When it comes to five-month-old Kariana Caldwell, Mr. Caldwell, you are her father. There you go. Let's see. Ms. Fortson? Yes, ma'am. Are you relieved? Yes, ma'am. I am. And do you understand what I said to you? Yes, ma'am. These children are counting on you all to figure out a way to get it together. If you don't want to be in a relationship, you got a co-parent because now it's been determined you are this child's father. Now, it's great that your family helps support the child, but Ms. Fortson shouldn't be the only one out here working and making sure the child has what she needs. Are we clear? Yes. You got to find a way. job. You right, you right. But I, I do what I do, too, to make sure that we straight, though. No, she you don't. Man, come on with me. Listen, 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 no, listen. No, you don't. Listen, I'll tell you like this. You can either do it voluntarily or the court in your home state will make sure you take care of that child financially. You understand? Yes. So step up to the plate and swing, all right? Ms. Washup. You previously appeared in this courtroom with your son regarding the paternity of the defendant's daughter. Yes, ma'am. The previous time you were in this courtroom, yes. it was determined that your son was not the child's biological father? Yes, yes. And I, that hurt you Yeah, it did, but I still love the baby. I still yes. love her. Mr. Hopkins, you are not the father. You would also like to have the current child mm -hmm. that Ms. Smith is pregnant with tested as well. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. You both need to decide whether or not you want to have that as a prenatal test. Prenatal. I agree. Yes. So yeah. this court will order that you go and get tested. I wish you the best of luck in the meantime. I will see you both soon. Court is adjourned. Oh. Unfortunately, a few weeks after I sent you away for that prenatal test, your son was tragically killed. Yes. I'm very sorry. You are here today because you don't believe your son fathered the defendant's now two-year-old son, Jovan Jr., and you are desperate for the truth. Yes. Ms. Smith, you state that the plaintiff's son, Jovan Hopkins, is your child's father, and you say today's results will prove your case and clear your name. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Washup, why are you so positive your son is not the father? Because she lied about the first one. And then she lied about the first, you know, baby. And then... And, and I, I, I just want the truth, but she just lied. Take your time. I know this is very <laughs> difficult. There's a part of you that wants... Yes. ...this baby to be your grandchild. Sure do. I still have a part of him here. Yeah. <sighs> I know he wanted his son. He wanted one. And hopefully this is his. And he'll... I feel at ease. Okay. And it is understandable that you feel reluctant to get attached to the baby. Yeah. But I don't want to be attached. And then you just up and snatch him out of my life anytime you please us. And that's... I, I ain't gonna be able to do it. Ms. Smith, you are certain that your child is Ms. Washup's son's biological child? Yes, ma'am. You're ma certain? You don't have a doubt? No doubt at all. It was, like, hard on me. Once he passed, I was in and out the hospital. They put him on steroids to help him grow because my heart was messing up and they wanted to hurry up and have a C-section. And it was a lot of complications with the pregnancy after Jovan passed away, so... Um, it was real hard on me. I didn't even know she had the baby until I seen pictures on Facebook, like, when he was, like, two, three months old. I see pictures on Facebook. She now even called to let me know she had the baby. So when you did go into labor, Miss Smith, and you know for certain that this is 
you, if your child's family, you didn't call and say, I just want to let you know I'm going into the hospital? It was a scheduled C-section. Actually, I called her and gave her the wrong date that I was having a C-section. On she, purpose? On purpose. On purpose, yes, I did. So, exactly. I think she's Thank doing you. that. She did it on purpose because someone else is the dad because she... Why would you give me the wrong date? Because you wanted this person that was supposed to be the daddy to be there? Oh, you yeah. feel like she gave you the wrong date because <laughs> there was going to be someone else, else there, there. Who, who's the real biological yeah. Girl, father. Yeah. See, this is why I don't deal with her. That's why I don't deal with her. She laughed for free. She laughed for fun. But what? make up lies. But, 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 Miss Smith, we, we, we do have... Let's speak honestly. If we're gonna speak, let's speak honestly. The last time we were here, the child that they thought was Jovan's biological child... I really child, swear with, to God, I thought that they was They were unfortunately informed it was not. So you do have to understand that there may be a tad bit of fear going into this that we are hoping and praying that history doesn't repeat itself. You gotta acknowledge that. Right. That 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 truly That's all I ask. what happened before set the table for this. So, Miss Washa, what else causes you to doubt this young woman when you know that your son was involved with her? She he, my son was involved with her and she was involved with somebody else. because like, my daughter had the baby over to the house. And I came, I was over there for the weekend visiting my other grandkids. My daughter tell me that Olivia says she's on her way to pick up the baby. It was stated that his dad wants him to come home. His dad who? <laughs> his dad? That's been the case. And it's not my grandson. I want the whole name back. Jovan Devonte Hopkins Jr., I want it back. That did not happen. Oh, did I mean, I came and got my baby, but for one, I'm... You know, I love Jovan to the fullest. Even though he gone, I still love him. I can believe... And I, mean, I would I can't never say that. allow another man to be considered Junior's father, period. So I know I'm back right there. That's a lie. I wouldn't even fix my mouth to say So you're saying like that... Because what she claims is that out of your own mouth, you said it's... The dad said his... His dad said it's time for him to come home. She, what she claims is he say, she say. She said no, someone else told her. No, you didn't hear that come no. out of my mouth, um, Sherry. You didn't. Come on now. You didn't hear me get on that phone and say his daddy want him. No, period. Ms. Washa, but truthfully, what, what motive would she have Thank to you. say that your son is her child's biological father and I, name I her son? The money. What money? His CDs that his grandmama got what for CDs? the What CDs? What? Who owned it? Know. Next slide. I don't call and ask nobody for nothing. I handle my child on my own, all my kids. You so, could, it's, it's just as well. She I mean, I want name. money. Where it's at? Call, like, Social Security, like you didn't call Let Social Security. Let me get Security. it. I called Social Security yesterday. I did do that. At the end of the day, she is full of it. Why would you call while you're pregnant? I'm, I'm finna have his baby next month, so I don't need pampers. I don't need milk. I don't need clothes, huh? Exactly. Yeah, you need Come it. Come on, now, get it together. And when you get it together... It, it shouldn't even matter. It's gonna be together when it shouldn't even matter. Ladies. Whatever it is, Olip... Olip... Ladies. Let's just pause for a minute. I want to understand next. You feel... I understand the Social Security situation now. I, listen, before you all get into it again, I understand. I'm not... Stop with the body language. Stop with the taunting. You are a mother. But not you are, one. No, it's, this is not the point. You're a mother. And you have talked about in this courtroom the way you have sacrificed, provided for your children. You don't ask anybody for anything. You do it yourself. You know that. I don't think you can sit down and imagine what it would mean if one of those children were ripped from your life. So you're dealing with a woman... I mean, Social Security aside, name aside, all this nonsense aside, she's standing here with a picture frame <laughs> with her child. If what you say is true then your child deserves to know her. No, he doesn't. No, he does. Because no, he that's doesn't. not... No, that would be his grandmother. OK. And, I, and look, as his mother, you should want your child to have as large a village as he can have to be able to be loved. No. You named... No. You named your child after her child. Look, all He's I'm saying, I don't want to deal with this lady, period. I don't mean no What harm is it that you feel? Anything no, like no, that. No, no, I, I want to know what you feel, Miss Smith. What are you feeling? I just feel like I don't need to deal with her. Why? Because I'm protecting my child from his feelings, from him being hurt, from him hearing how people talked about his daddy, how people treated his daddy, and what happened to his daddy. I'm protecting my child. 
Yes, her child is gone, but that's the seed of me still having my fiance here. Mm -hmm. And I cherish that. And if someone touches that one, then it becomes a problem. Seriously. Ms. Washa, what are your hopes for today? What uh, do you hope for? my son's baby, because he only wanted, he can have, if this something, he can leave a legacy. Just as well as his brothers and his sisters have something. It's an important moment for you because you want your son to have left something behind. Yes, ma'am. He did leave something behind, Junior. All right. And I got it, and it's all mass. <laughs> you didn't have to say that. You, you, you didn't have to go there. That was unnecessary. And that's what I'm saying to you. What was I, unnecessary? No, what was unnecessary? What they put me through, what I went through. There you go. And that's that why I asked you why. Period. I asked you why. So if you go, if you go have the beat, then tell it. You in the courtroom, you're not standing in here performing like you performing, acting like you hair, hair flipping, mama crying about her son being dead, you rolling your eyes like you can't understand why. And I know you in here being disingenuous because there's no way in the world a mother can do that to another mother that's lost a child. There's something that you've experienced where you are hurt so bad, and that's why I gave her her chance to tell her side, and that's why I looked at you and said, why? What's going on here? It ain't enough hair in the world for all this flipping you doing. <laughs> it ain't. <laughs> and let me really keep it real, because I shoot straight in here, and you also dealing with the fact that the last time we were in here, the result didn't come out right, and you know that you had a part to play in that. Okay. So when we really, really break it down, it's all of these layers yes. together. So you got a lot going on. And what I'm saying is when you have moments where you stand in the light and, and, and you can be in truth, just grab onto that moment and take it. Because I don't think anybody here believes you are in a position that is something that anyone would envy. You've got a lot on your plate. Yep. But you don't want to be in a position where you disrespect yourself, your child, and the memory of the man you say is your child's father by dishonoring his mother. I'm not gonna let you go out like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying there could have been ways to handle it. If she mm -hmm. felt that that wasn't his baby, and like she just I sat here, no let her speak. Like let her speak, Miss Washington. Here and said, "My son loved her." I know he loved her. Yes. So when he passed, you shouldn't have treated me how you treated me when I was pregnant with his baby. Period. Knowing I'm due next month, you shouldn't have did that. I didn't know what like, they seriously, you do. Like, let, how let did her you speak. do that? You should have treated me with a level of respect, even I though did. you had doubt. You didn't do that. I did. She didn't even put my baby in obituary. She put I didn't Olivia do Smith and unborn child. That's because she had doubt. You didn't come no, to our baby I shower did. because she had doubt. She didn't let me go through the body with her because she didn't like me or had doubt. No. You know no, what I'm saying? It no, was, it's a lot no. to it. Yeah, and I'm pregnant and I'm stressing and me, you, and her know the situation of how he passed. You know, so why would you treat me like that? Your Honor. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I have so much anger towards her mm -hmm. because I didn't get the respect that I know her son would have wanted me to get. When he passed, it felt like she had that authority. Oh, he gone. Now I can show out. Now I can prove to her who I really is. You know what I'm saying? When I called and asked her to voodoo the body, she told me she wasn't going. I called back. I said, they say you have to make an appointment. She said, oh, I'm on my way. I instantly get the crime. Why? Why y'all doing me like that? Olivia, this got a, this family issues. Really? You know what I'm saying? She went off on me. And and this this is what this is what I just needed you to say. Yeah. Honor. Because no, no, we've been doing this long enough to know that there is more than one side to every story. But listen, yeah. we cannot go back and fix all of that. But we can't go back and fix it. What we can do is get the answers you came here to get so we can figure out how to move forward. Listen, listen. So this baby does not have to grow up in this toxic environment because he deserves better. Yes, he Jerome, does. I want the envelope. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. Prior to Mr. Hopkins passing, a prenatal DNA test was performed. A blood sample was drawn from the mother 
and fetal DNA was isolated from the sample. Genetic analysis was performed and a probability of paternity was generated. In the case of Washup versus Smith, when it comes to two-year-old Jovan Hopkins Jr. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Hopkins is the father. Go on and say it, I'm ready. I'm ready. I know what you've been through. I can't imagine processing all of that. You want your son to have left something behind? Yes, ma'am. He did leave something behind, Junior. All right. And I got it, and it's all Max's. You didn't have to say that. Mr. Hopkins is the father. Go on and say it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Is the father. <laughs> Thank you, baby. That's your grandchild. Can you, can I see it? No, ma'am. Miss Smith, you've come to this courtroom mm. to prove and to show that your assertion is true. That is Jovan's biological child. You've been proven right. I know what you've been through. And I can't truthfully even imagine being pregnant in the final stages of a pregnancy. I know how crazy I was, and I wasn't dealing with half of what you were dealing with. I can't imagine processing all of that, but I think it's important in this moment for you to allow your child the opportunity to at least know he has family so that he's not here 20 years later asking questions or, look, repeating the cycle. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll see you all in my chambers. Court is adjourned. <laughs> Look at Hi, you. Granny. Give me a hug. Goodness. This is so important. This was a beautiful thing. And you being able to do this in this moment is a great lesson for you as a young woman and as a mother. And I'm proud of you in this moment. And these are going to be important moments for your child to have because he won't have the physical, right?